Are you ready for a new adventure? Time to travel back in time. Let's go. Are you ready for a new adventure? Let's learn about the past with Anna and Leo. Hi, friends. Welcome to Unlock This, a podcast from Honest History, where we join all friends Anna, Will, and Pussy on adventures through time and uncover some really cool stories along the way. My name is William. I'm six years old, and I love learning about history, especially new stories that I don't hear about in school. I can't wait for today's story, and I think you're going to love it too. So let's dive in. Leo, check out this photo hanging on the wall of the museum. It's a photo of a bridge. A really big bridge. That's the Brooklyn Bridge. It's in New York City. Now that I think about it, I've been to New York before, and I think I actually saw the Brooklyn Bridge. That picture of it looks pretty old. Was the bridge built a long time ago? Yep. It's 141 years old. And at the time, it was the longest suspension bridge in the world. Do you want to hear the story about how it was built? I do. Maybe that's what we could learn about today. What do you think, Anna? I think that's a great idea. Why, hello, Percy. We were just on our way to learn about the Brooklyn Bridge. Is there anything in the vault about it? Let's see what he finds. It looks like Percy wants to show us two things today. Which means we'll probably be traveling to two different places today. The first thing he wants us to look at is this old piece of paper. It's a drawing of some kind of building. And there's pictures of men under the building. They look like they have shovels and they're digging. Is this a drawing about the Brooklyn Bridge? That's what I was thinking, but it doesn't really look like a bridge. And there's a name on one of these papers. It says Washington Roebling. Do you know who that is, Anna? That's one of the men who helped design the Brooklyn Bridge. I think Percy wants us to look at the next thing to the drawing, too. Is it a feather? A feather? Yeah, a white feather. I wonder what it means. Well, hopefully we'll find out soon. Hold on, Leo. I think we're near some kind of river. Look, there's boats out on the water. And those buildings in the distance. Is that a city? And there's another city on the other side of the water. You know, it looks a lot like the photo hanging in the museum. Except the bridge. It isn't here. You're right, Leo. But it does look like they're building something. Do you see all those workmen? They're down by the water. Maybe we should get a closer look so we can see what they're doing. Look, Anna. Some of the workmen are standing on something floating in the water. It looks like a huge wooden box. Percy said that huge box is called the caisson. I learned about this, Leo. Do you remember the picture of the bridge we saw in the museum? It has these two huge towers. Well, those towers actually go down really deep below the water. To get to the bottom of the river, they placed these wooden structures called caissons under the water. The men would work inside of the caissons and dig into the bedrock. So that wooden thing in the water is a caisson? Yeah, and I think those men are lowering it into the river. See, look, they're shoveling stones on top of it to make it sink. And do you see that thing sticking out of the top of the caisson? That's a pump. It's taking all of the water inside the huge box and pumping it out. The pump made the caisson watertight, which means that water couldn't get inside. Once the water was pumped out, men could get inside the caisson by first going into a metal chamber. Then, 
they would climb down a long ladder. Once they got down inside the caisson, they could start working on parts of the bridge that were underwater. But it was hard work. They were shoveling away heavy dirt and rocks, and it got really hot down there. Some of the men even said that they felt sick when they came back up to the surface. People didn't know it at the time, but those men got something called the bends. The bends. Scuba divers can get that when they come back up to the surface quickly. Exactly. There was a lot of pressure inside the caisson because it was so deep underwater. All the water above the caisson was pushing down on the men. After they were done working, they had to come back up to the surface very slowly. Otherwise, they could really hurt themselves. People who came up to the surface too quickly would feel very dizzy, and they were in a lot of pain. So it was really dangerous working inside those. Yeah, but the caissons were an important part of the bridge's design. Nothing like it had ever been done before. In fact, there's the man who designed the caissons. The man over there wearing the suit? Yes, that's Washington Roebling. His father, John Roebling, was the original designer of the Brooklyn Bridge. But he died unexpectedly, so Washington had to take over. Washington finished his father's design and started building the bridge in 1869. It looks like he's holding some papers in his hand. I'd like to see what those papers are. Let's get closer. Hey, Washington just set the papers down. Now we can get a good look at them. I think these are drawings. And this one looks familiar. That's the same drawing we saw in the vault. See, at the bottom of the drawing, there's pictures of men and they're digging. And the building on top of the men looks a lot like the caisson floating in the river in front of us. Anna, is this a drawing of a caisson? Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. Percy must have showed us one of Washington's designs. Well, hold on, Anna. It feels like we're about to travel again. Hi, friends. Are you enjoying today's episode? I'd like to take a quick break from the story to tell you about another great place to learn about the past. Honest History creates magazines and books for kids that are filled with fun stories and activities that bring history to life. From pirates to spies to great inventions and so much more, you'll learn about interesting people, places, and events from around the world that made history. Created for kids ages 6 through 12, you can sign up and receive new adventures delivered straight to your doorstep every quarter. Just visit honesthistory.co. That's honesthistory.co to sign up today. Oh, and here's a special offer for our podcast listeners. Use code UNLOCKTHIS for 10% off. Again, that special code is UNLOCKTHIS. Okay, let's get back to the story. We must have jumped forward in time because Anna, look! The bridge! It's finished! I can't believe there was nothing there before. Isn't it amazing? At this time, it was the longest suspension bridge in the world. You know, I was wondering, what is a suspension bridge? I mean, what makes it different from other bridges? That's a great question, Leo. A suspension bridge has these big metal ropes. The ropes are attached to the deck of the bridge. And the deck is the part of the bridge that people walk on and cars drive on. So it kind of looks like the deck is hanging above the river. Ah, I see. And these metal ropes, do they make the bridge really strong? Yep, that's exactly what they do. Hey, Anna, there's a crowd of people gathering near us. They all seem to be waiting for something. You're right, Leo. Something is definitely about to happen. And my guess is that it has something to do with the bridge. I think I see a carriage and horses over there. Let's try to get closer for a better look. Wait a second. Leo, you see that woman sitting in the carriage? That's Emily Roebling. She's the wife of Washington Roebling, and she is responsible for this amazing bridge. 
But I thought you said Washington Roebling took over the Brooklyn Bridge when his father died. That was the plan. And he did build it for the first three years. But Washington got very ill. How? What happened? Do you remember those caissons? Well, Washington would go down inside of the caissons with all the other men to work on the bridge. One day, he came up to the surface too quickly, and he got very sick. After that, he had a hard time moving, and he couldn't see or hear very well. Washington became so ill that he couldn't leave his bed. It was impossible for him to be at the building site in person. So, he asked someone to help. Someone he could trust. His wife! Emily! Yes, Emily Roebling stepped in to save the bridge. She would be Washington's eyes and ears at the building site. But that's a huge responsibility. Did she know a lot about bridges when she started? She was no expert at first, but Emily was clever, and she had been interested in science since she was a little girl. When her husband asked her to help, she took the job very seriously. She began studying engineering and learning as much as she could as quickly as possible. She would get instructions from her husband and give them to the builders. She would write letters for him, keep records of what had been done, and go to events to represent Washington. During this time, she quickly became the lead field engineer. Soon, all the bridge's engineers and workers went to Emily with their questions. They trusted and believed her. That's right, Percy. He said it's important to remember that at this time, women in the United States weren't even allowed to become engineers. Really? So Emily was doing something other women couldn't do in the 1800s. And she didn't really want a lot of people to know about it. Why? Well, if they knew how much work she was doing, they probably wouldn't let her husband be the chief engineer anymore. In fact, a group of men tried to fire Washington. They thought he couldn't do his job because of his health issues. Emily convinced the men that her husband could see the bridge from his window using binoculars, and she could give the builders his instructions. The men agreed to let Washington keep his job. Little did they know just how much work Emily was doing. She would spend the next 11 years making sure the Brooklyn Bridge was built. And that was a huge responsibility it cost a lot of money to build the bridge, and it was very dangerous work. At least 20 people died during the construction. So it was important to keep the workers safe, and it was also important to make sure the bridge was safe. Hey, look! Emily is crossing the bridge in a carriage, and it looks like she's holding something in her lap. Is that a chicken? It's a rooster! Emily was the first person to cross the finished bridge, and she carried a rooster with her because she thought it would bring good luck. The rooster was a symbol of victory. That rooster doesn't sound too happy. <laughs> yes, it crowed constantly as they crossed. Emily was terrified that it would peck at her while they rode in the carriage. I don't think the rooster enjoyed the ride. Percy says he would have liked crossing the Brooklyn Bridge with Emily. Maybe she should have taken a mouse, huh, Percy? A mouse definitely would have been quieter. Hey, Anna, what is that man doing over there? I think that's an engineer. He's watching the bridge to look for vibrations as the horse trots over it. This was one of the bridge's final tests. Why is he testing for vibrations? Engineers can figure out if a bridge is safe by measuring how much it vibrates when things cross it. And you see, the engineer is smiling. The Brooklyn Bridge passed the test. So it's safe to cross. That's right. And just a few days later, on May 24th, 1883, the bridge would be open to the public. Hold on, the rooster. I just remembered something. That rooster Emily is holding is white. Anna, do you remember the feather we found in the vault? That's right. It was white, too. Maybe it was a rooster feather, just like the rooster that crossed the Brooklyn Bridge with Emily. We're back in the vault. That was some good thinking, Leo. I completely forgot about the feather. 
I'm glad I remember too. Wait, but Anna, is that the end of the story? What happened to Emily Roebling after the bridge opened? The bridge was probably one of her most famous achievements, but it certainly wasn't her only one. After the Brooklyn Bridge, Emily fought for women's equality. This was at a time when women weren't allowed to vote. She also got a law certificate and gave many speeches encouraging other women to study law. Sadly, she wasn't able to finish all of her work. Emily died in 1903 at the age of 59. Today, not that many people know about her story, but I think that's starting to change. That's right! Percy reminded me that there's a plaque on the bridge dedicated to three Roeblings who built the bridge, John, Washington, and Emily. There's also a quote on the plaque that says, On the back of every great work, we can find the self-sacrificing devotion of a woman. It definitely took a lot of hard work to build something like the Brooklyn Bridge. Not to mention, it was dangerous. What do you think would have happened if Emily hadn't helped? I don't know, but something tells me the Brooklyn Bridge might not be the same bridge as it is today if it wasn't for Emily Roebling. Welcome back. That sure was a great adventure. I don't know about you, but I'm going to tell all my friends about this amazing story. That's all for now. But if you want to learn more, be sure to check out my favorite magazine for kids, Honest History. There's a ton of stuff to learn in each issue, and I love the fun activities and questions. Bye! This episode was narrated by Nikki Bond and Joanne Shindley and written by Heidi Coburn. The production was read by Robot Pirate Media. To learn more about Honest History, visit us at honesthistory.co and follow for updates on social media.